Okay, good evening. Uh, meeting, Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. Uh, just a quick note on the agenda this evening. The item that previously was listed uh, that was submitted by the Inn by the Sea has been withdrawn from the agenda. So if anyone is here only for that agenda item, um, that will not be before us tonight. First issue on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. And if there are any changes or corrections? If not, I'd be happy to entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor to accept the minutes? They've been accepted. Uh, let me just quickly run through the correspondence we've received. Um, the letter from Steve Moore regarding In by the Sea. Uh, another letter from Mr. Moore to the Butters regarding In by the Sea. A letter from P. Uh, Wokonish regarding the Gallant Private Access Way Permit. A letter from M. Kelly, Reshore Acres Paper Streets. Planning Commissioner's Journal, Spring 2004, Shoreland Zoning News, Winter 2004. Um, we were provided some additional correspondence. Uh, and another letter from Peter of Konich regarding the Gallant Private Access Way. A letter from Michael Hill, Esquire. Uh, regarding Gallant Private Access Way. That letter is May 17th. An email from Russell Tornrose, dated May 18th, regarding the Hamlin Street amended subdivision plan. And an email from Philip McGoldrick regarding the Paper Street uh, withdrawal request at Shore Acres. I think that covers the correspondence. Okay. Um, first item on our agenda tonight under new business is the Proputa Club Site Plan Resource Protection Permit. This is a request by the Proputa Club for site plan review and a resource protection permit to install a new irrigation system and pump building at the Proputa Club. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes. I'd like to make a comment. I don't think uh, this will affect my opinion, but I am a member of Paputa Club. But I think I can be unbiased in my concern. If any of the members on the board feel differently, uh, please let me know. All right. Thank you, David. I think it should be fine. Uh, this is on for site plan completeness and uh, also a public hearing so we will hold a public hearing uh, on this item tonight as well. Uh, good evening. I'm Darius Arampour. I'm the superintendent of the Perpudu Golf Club. Uh, we use irrigation to maintain our turf and lawn areas. Uh, we have currently have an approximately 20 year old system that is failing and is basically beyond reasonable repair. Uh, we are planning to modernize our irrigation system and install uh, a new system in the fall of 04 and into the spring of 05. We have hired uh, a consulting irrigation engineer, uh, Jeff Bowman, irrigation consulting, who's very familiar. He's done a lot of work in this area and has designed the system and has worked uh, extensively with the tools and has all the knowledge and who will be doing uh, on the speaking on our behalf. Good evening. Um, thank you, Darius. Um, as Darius had alluded to, um, I'm here representing the Papuda Club. My name is Jeff Bowman. I'm a consulting irrigation engineer um, hired by the Papuda Club to design and provide some construction administration on our proposed golf course irrigation system improvement plan. Um, my office is in Pepperell, Massachusetts. The name of the firm that I represent is Irrigation Consulting Incorporated. 
The Propudic Club has a golf course irrigation system existing that was put in in 1985, at which time um, it was installed with typical irrigation installation practices and protocol, uh, typical of the year, which are light years behind where irrigation technology is today in terms of installation procedures and products and controls and communication and whatnot. Uh, based on just where technology has gone in the past 20 years, as well as some craftsmanship and installation issues from back in 1985 that are continuing to present themselves, the existing system has become pretty difficult to handle, and they would like to upgrade that from pretty much the entire basis. Sprinklers, pipes, valves, every, pretty much everything that goes into an irrigation system is going to be replaced. The existing system is going to be abandoned and left in place. The system upgrade as part of it is a central control package which allows the golf course maintenance staff to manage their resources all from one central controller location. Uh, it really aids in improved efficiency um, and irrigation distribution. Also as part of this is putting in a new pump station uh, that is a l somewhat larger in flow capacity to enable the golf course to water, provide their nightly watering time in a fairly short period of time so that you can water very quickly at night, let the golf course dry out for golfers to enter around, say, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning. As part of the um, upgrade, what we would like to do from a pump end is move what is an existing uh, pump station located uh, adjacent to the Ocean House Road on the 15th hole. This is the, this is the site plan north to my left. Ocean House Road, spur link running basically almost parallel to the bottom of the sheet with the entrance to the club here. The existing water supply is on 15, taking municipal water off Ocean House Road, pumping it from a booster pump station on 15, distributing it throughout the site from there. The proposal is to bring the pump and move it interior to the golf course, pretty much the central heart location of the site, on an existing irrigation pond on the 8th hole. What that is going to allow us to do is quickly disperse the water throughout all the irrigation mains and not point hydraulic loading it from here. What it also is going to allow the club to do is decrease some of its dependence on the municipality or the domestic water purveyor here as being the Portland Water District. Uh, over time, the golf course would like to develop some wells, pump wells into the existing man-made pond on 8 to ultimately decrease their dependence on, from the purveyor, um, saving money and also taking some stress off the existing street mains of Portland Water District. Also as part of the proposal, there is going to be seven crossings of pipe through waterways. There are two methods of crossing these waterways on the table right now. One of them is trenching, which basically is a surface excavation with a, with a short, approximately 12 inch wide trench, which is going to cut through the, these existing waterways. The second proposal of insulation methods in the waterways or resource areas is using directional drilling. Um, directional drilling causes, what it does is it takes a core of soil underneath, drilling under the waterway so you have no surface disturbance and there's virtually no, very little chance for any erosion to occur. The, the club is willing to directionally drill, however it's somewhat expensive and they would prefer the trenching route. Uh, we would like to leave that decision. The decision is in your hands whether or not you're going to allow us um, to trench in those areas or not. There's also going to be a resource disturbance in installation of the main pump station along the eighth hole here. Uh, there will be uh, some trenching occurring. Uh, there will be a trench dug into the pond. The pond will be dewatered, but not all the way. There's going to be 24 to 36 inches of water remaining in the bottom of the pond, uh, during which point in time an 18-inch PVC pipe is going to be installed into the base of this pond, feeding an adjacent concrete cylinder, also known as a wet well, with a pump station sitting on it. 
in, throughout this construction, there's going to be thorough erosion control measures will be taken, um, all in accordance with the main Department of, of Environmental Protect, Protection um, best management practices for erosion and sedimentation control. All trenches on the project are going to be restored to pre-construction conditions. So they will be, where turf can't be salvaged in the trenched area, seeding um, will, will be taking place in those areas. The only permanent structure which is proposed on the project is the enclosure for the pump station on adjacent to the eight hole. The dimensions of the permanent structure is eight feet by seven foot six inches is the footprint and it's eight feet four inches high. This will be placed on a 14 foot by 14 foot concrete slab. The power serving the pump station is going to be underneath an existing gravel access way which leads from the ninth hole eastward to the pond on eight. The sum of the, of the temporary disturbed resource is going to be, a pro, it's going to be 500 square feet. So in, throughout the construction process, there'll be approximately 500 square feet of resource area impacted, um, all of which will be restored to pre-construction conditions. The 250 square feet of the 500 um, is in the pump system area. The other 250 is a combination on the seven crossings of the resource areas. And if directional drilling is utilized, then um, the 250 square feet of disturbed area in the crossings will be reduced down approximately 50, feet. virtually no um, impact on those areas in directional drilling. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we, as I said, we do have a public hearing scheduled on this item. The first, however, uh, I'd like the board to just limit its discussion to completeness. We have to make a finding on completeness, and then we can move on. Uh, again, the completeness is uh, an issue for two uh, sets of checklists, site plan review and resource protection permit. So if there's a discussion uh, on that, yes, Barbara. I don't see that anything has been left out, and I don't believe that any staff member felt that there was anything left out either. So if everybody's in agreement, I have a motion for the board to consider. Okay. Motion for the board to consider, motion for completeness, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Papudic Club to install a pump building and new irrigation system at the Papudic Club located at 300 Spurwink Avenue be deemed complete. There is a second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Um, right now, we'll open the public hearing on this application. And if there's anyone here who would like to speak on this application, please approach the podium and identify yourself and your address. And we'd be happy to listen to you. Okay. Is there no one on that item, so we will close the public hearing. Uh, okay, now we can move on to the application itself. Uh, I guess my first comment would be, um, uh, I assume you've seen the letter from Post Associates. Uh, I'd like to hear from the rest of the board, but they seem to be comfortable that the uh, trenching method is uh, is satisfactory and would not create any major uh, problems at the site, and I'd certainly be inclined to go along with their recommendation. Uh, I know that's an important issue. Does anybody else have any thoughts on that? Um, it, it appears that the given the amount of disturbance is, is minimal and the amount of time it would be disturbed is minimal, so that, that seems to be fine. Uh, there, is there a DEP um, permit involved with this? At this point, I've been talking to uh, Doug Burdick uh, from the main DEP. He has told me on the telephone it's not a guarantee, but they're hoping 
uh, to go for permit by rule. I filled out that application for permit by rule and sent it in the uh, $55 application fee. Uh, and okay. I know I believe he's been in contact with the town owner and he has not gotten back to me on permit by rule. But that is what he's hoping to put us in. Okay. Any other questions from the board, Dave? If, if we make a motion uh, regarding this issue, could we do something in that motion that would um, require the applicant to respond to the town regarding the results of this DEP investigation? Um, yes, I, I believe that a permit is required. The question is how how they get it. So um, whether we include that as a condition or not, they would need the DEP permit. But you're hoping that it would be a permit by rule, I assume. That's what he was hoping for. Yeah. It is it's not all his decision, but the, they need to discuss it. Like I said, I have filled out the application. All right. There, there is an issue, and I, and I would request a condition of approval that uh, I know there's a question now as to how, what the total area of the wetland disturbance would be, and the town planner I know has asked that that total area of temporary wetland disturbance be calculated and submitted prior to the issuance of a building permit. Have you discussed that with Maureen? Uh, we do have a square footage. Okay. You have that now? Yes. Okay. Um, Prior to us getting our billing permit for the structure, we would submit that. Right. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. We were just discussing the, uh, that's all right, the uh, area of temporary wetland disturbance, and apparently they have that information, but so, so long as it's submitted prior to the issuance of the building permit. I think you'll be fine. Absolutely. Any other? I'd like questions? to ask a question. Sure. Um, Jack? The, during the summer, you'll be a major user of well water, and I was wondering whether you are aware of any possible impacts on private wells in the immediate na neighborhood. Um, there has been no, at this point, there's no proposal on the table for groundwater exploration. There aren't any existing wells that are going to be pumped, nor is there any immediate plans to drill any wells. Prior to um, the club proceeding with groundwater development, which is not even on the table at this point in time, they will do some thorough hydrogeological evaluation to see if the will cause any um, impacts on the surrounding wells. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, we just received a copy of a memorandum from the Conservation Commission on this issue, which I should just note for the record for the correspondence. It's a memorandum dated May 17, 2004, from the Conservation Commission. Uh, to briefly summarize, uh, the Conservation Commission uh, supports the issuance of the Resource Protection Permit, feeling that the installation proposed is proposed in a way that's least environmentally damaging and the resulting benefit would be that less water is used. So just for the record, the Conservation Commission uh, supports the application. And you can have a copy of this if you like. Anything else on this item? We have a motion. Barbara? Uh, motion for the board to consider, <clears throat> excuse me, motion for approval, findings of fact. The Perbuda Club located at 300 Spurwink Avenue is requesting site plan review and a resource protection permit to install a pump building and new irrigation system at the golf course, some of which will cross wetlands, which requires review under section 19-9, site plan regulations and section 19-8-3, resource protection regulations. Two, the project will temporarily disturb wetland areas Three, the application substantially complies with Section 19-9, Site Plan Regulations, and Section 19-8-3, Resource Protection Regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Buddha Club to install 
a pump building, a new irrigation system at the Buddha Club located at 300 Spurwink Avenue be approved, subject to the following condition, that the total area of temporary wetland disturbance be calculated and submitted to the town planner prior to the issuance of a building permit or any alteration of the site. So moved. We have a second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? That is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is the uh, Gallant Private Access Way Permit. Uh, Aaron Grady Gallant on behalf of Cynthia Grady is requesting a private access way permit to construct, construct a driveway for a lot located behind 364 Mitchell Road. And this will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19-7-9 Private Access Ways. Um, again, I would ask the board after the applicant has reviewed and introduced the project, first we need to discuss and make a finding as to completeness uh, and a public hearing is also scheduled for this evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Mitchell, Mitchell and Associates, uh, representing Aaron Blunt for the private access way. Uh, the lot, uh, which is a, uh, a, an existing lot of record, um, is approximately a half acre in size. It has uh, 20 feet of frontage on Mitchell Road, and the 20-foot strip extends back to the buildable lot area. Uh, we have... Uh, as you know, the, the, uh, the standards for a private access way uh, ask for a 30-foot wide uh, right-of-way. Uh, so the uh, Cynthia Grady, uh, Aaron's mother, who resides in this uh, residence here, has granted a 10-foot wide strip of land along the 20-foot strip uh, so that we've got the 30-foot wide uh, right-of-way. In addition to the 10-foot strip, uh, she has also granted a 30-foot strip uh, in this location for the, uh, the turnaround and an additional area for stormwater management. Um, so the, the proposal consists of a 14-foot wide uh, private access way, the 14-foot uh, surface with an 18-foot wide gravel base uh, back to approximately 260 feet from Mitchell Road uh, back to a designed uh, turnaround, emergency turnaround that was designed in accordance with uh, the town standards. Uh, I have met with Chief McGoldrick to review these plans and he's, he's approved uh, this turnaround. Uh, the lot will be serviced by public sewer and public water and underground electric telephone and cable, which all have been shown on this plan here. Uh, with regard to stormwater management, uh, basically the, uh, the grading of this private access way slopes to a low point located here and then will uh, enter a uh, precast concrete uh, dry well and um, basically enter the dry well and then infiltrate back into the ground. We uh, <clears throat> received a few comments, uh, engineering comments from uh, Steve Harding, which I have addressed uh, in a letter dated May 14th. I'm not sure whether your packet includes this or not, but uh, let me just review quickly um, 
basically there are three comments uh, Steve commented on the fact that we offset the center line of the private access way two feet from the center line of the 30 foot wide right of way um, and if you remember during the workshop meeting we discussed this issue um, it was the applicant um, request to put the entire 14 foot wide surface roadway all within the uh, 20 foot wide strip of land and not have a portion of it on the 10 foot wide easement and that's that's the reason why it's offset two feet another comment made by Steve was that um, we have by, by shifting it two feet we end up with two to one slopes in a very small area alongside the roadway um, and as technically that's true um, but we have shown a stone riprap along those areas of two to one slope and a minor comment uh, regarding the private access way was um, the silt fence was graphically shown uh, off of the property um, and it was it was done so just for clarification we've added a note that the silt fence shall be installed on the gallant, uh, gallant property the uh, the second comment made by Steve was um, he requested that all of the meets and bounds be placed on the um, the 30 foot wide right of way uh, and including the 30 foot area around the turnaround and we've done that and resubmitted the plan uh, to reflect that additionally uh, the plan has been stamped by a licensed surveyor uh, that plan also has been uh, resubmitted to, to marine and the final comment was just to add some uh, detailed information regarding the sanitary sewer slopes and inverts and we've also done that so we've addressed all of the engineering comments um, and uh, I think that basically does it I, I do want to conclude by uh, just saying that uh, during the workshop meeting we asked that if the board deemed this complete and if there weren't any neighborhood uh, concerns that we request that we uh, the board grant approval of this e this evening thank you thank you um, again uh, I'd like to ask the board to limit its questions and comments to the issue of completeness and then we can make a determination on that before we move on uh, does anyone have any questions or concerns on the issue of completeness Dave I don't see any reason personally that uh, there were any thing that would indicate to me that it's not complete everybody else in the board agrees I will enter a motion go ahead be it ordered oh, that hold on <clears throat> does the applicant yeah. have a copy of this letter from the abutter Yes. Oh, I can see this one. Um, basically, he says that he has concern that excavation and later plowing would be harmful to the green growth and landscape that he's erected. On right. Uh, there was an agreement. Uh, <clears throat> there was an agreement between the applicant and the abutter that the, the road was to be offset six feet from the right-of-way line okay. and initially the, the initial submission that we made I had five feet there we've revised it to reflect the six feet I believe that there's a uh, a response by the neighbor uh, approving the six foot he just was handed his hand I didn't see that yeah. Okay, do uh, we have a motion for completeness? Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Aaron Grady Gallant for a private access way permit 
for a lot located behind 364 Mitchell Road, U31-9C, be deemed complete. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. The application has been deemed complete. Um, this has been scheduled for a public hearing this evening, so let me open the public hearing. If there's anyone that would like to speak to this issue, please approach the podium and identify yourself. Uh, yes, I'm Muzzy Barton. Um, I have bought the property just to the north here, Three Gordons Lane. And um, I don't have any particular problems other than I just wanted to express a few concerns that I have um, and hope that they might be listened to. Um, my first concern, and I think it's partially been addressed by, by what was said tonight, was the water table concerns and, and where the, uh, um, how the water table might be disturbed. Um, one of the issues that I was concerned somewhat about was whether, in fact, in the building of a piece of property, uh, building of a, of a residence on that piece of property, there might be fill brought in, which might, in fact, offset some of the water um, to abutting properties. Um, our home is here, and there is somewhat of a slope um, towards our property in this area, and I was just concerned about potential uh, disturbing of the water table towards our property. Um, the other concern I had was in regards to um, a fairly large amount of ledge in this area and um, the concern that in um, excavating for, for a residence, um, there might be some disturbing of that ledge. And our home probably sits also on some of that same ledge and whether in fact we might have to be concerned with just disturbing the footprint or the foundation of our home and just would, would not want to have um, perhaps damage caused by blasting um, that ledge in that area. Um, the other concern I have is, I guess, more of a personal one. We've um, very much enjoyed um, being able to look out into this area, which is a very wooded area, and certainly we'd love to maintain that open space. Um, and um, my thought might be that perhaps um, some uh, buffer of trees might be maintained or, in fact, a buffer of trees might be able to perhaps be planted um, in the adjoining, adjoining areas of the properties to perhaps help us maintain some of that privacy between um, both residences. Um, the only other concern I would have is that, um, that setbacks are uh, adhered to and that um, the property is placed, or that the residence is placed on the property according to um, setbacks. And my other concern was, of course, the requirement of um, a fire, the town requirement that a fire truck has to be able to make that um, turnaround. But obviously, they, it appears that they've accommodated that by purchasing the additional piece of property. Um, so I guess I can't stand in the way of progress and, and, um, and what's going on in our neighborhood. But I, as a conservationist, I'd love to see the, the area be maintained as wooded area. But... Um, that, again, is more of a personal thing. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak? Well, again, this is certainly a personal matter with me. I'm Cynthia Grady. I am the mother of Aaron Gallant. And I will certainly welcome her to our neighborhood. We are getting older, and it's nice to have a caring daughter right there. We are also concerned with conservation and all, and we do have plenty of trees, I think, enough for everybody. And our neighborhood certainly changed when Mr. Barton moved in next door. I've had that all to myself, going right back to Fort Williams. <laughs> And I hated it, too, and so I can understand it, but as he said, it's progress, and Aaron will make a great neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on this issue? Hi, I'm 
Mayor and Grady Gallant. I just want to address one of his concerns, which would also be mine, about the blasting and the house. I had Skip Murray come out and really check out the lot for me, and I figure he knows what he's doing in this town as well as anybody as far as that goes. And the house that I am trying to design is going to use the natural land and use as little blasting as possible, and that's part of the reason that we got the extra area for utilities to be able to you know, bypass as much ledge as possible and also work with the land that's there and, and build into that so that the blasting will be as limited as possible. And I want privacy too, so I'm just going to build right where I need to and leave as much as I possibly can there. I don't want to mow a lawn, I want trees. That's all, thanks. Thank you. Other comments? Okay, we close the public hearing. Um, we can move on to the discussion of the application. If there are any questions or concerns, Barbara. I'd like to say one thing in response to Mr. Barton, and I understand your concern about things, but according to the, um, the topography that we received, it appears that the land actually falls off from you. It's very slight, so you probably can't see it. And it's doubtful that the water, I'm no expert, but at least from what I'm looking at, it looks like it falls to, um, it would be the south, I guess, the south, away from your house, by, according to what I have. Um, the other, I have one question, John, and that is on the road, when it's coming in, there was some discussion in the application uh, about the, I guess, the riprap that you were putting in. Yep. Does that have to do with water? The water coming off the road, is, there, is the road going to make any difference in no. terms of how that water flows? All of the water has been directed to the northerly side of the roadway. Um, the only reason we added the riprap was because of the two to one slopes. Thank you. Yep. John, could you add any clarity to the concern about drainage in Mr. Barton's property? Yes. Um, you're correct that the drainage um, in this, this is a high point of the property right here. Everything drains in this direction here um, away from Mr. Barton's residence. So, it, it, it besides, um, Aaron does want to preserve this portion of the property in terms of the vegetation in the topography. Thank you. And as far as the ledge is concerned, Aaron is correct. Um, I, I guess Skip will be doing this project. Um, Skip is an expert at this. There are very strict regulations with regard to ledge blasting. Surveys of the budding properties will be done. The whole pre-blast survey um, is a normal course of, of blasting. Yeah, I was going to address that, that the, the issue of building and blasting really isn't part of our review here, but I am aware that there are very strict regulations about blasting and surveying, as Mr. Mitchell explained, other properties. So, uh, other comments, questions for the applicant? We have a motion. Peter? Um, I have a motion for the board to consider. I, I move that we make the following findings of fact. Uh, Aaron Grady Gallant, on behalf of Cynthia Grady, is re requesting a private access way permit to construct a driveway for a lot located behind 364 Mitchell Road, which requires review for compliance with Section 19-7-9 private access ways. Number two, the town engineer has reviewed the plans and made recommendations for revisions and additions. Number three, uh, the town attorney has reviewed the, the proposed easement and maintenance agreement. Number four, the application substantially complies with Section 19-7-9 private access mm -hmm. rates. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Aaron, Aaron Grady Gallant for a private access way permit for a lot located behind 364 Mitchell Road be approved subject to the following conditions. 
that the plans be, be revised per the town engineer's comments in his letter dated um, May 12th, 2004, which I believe the applicant has addressed, um, that the maintenance agreement and proposed easement be, be approved by the town attorney, signed by the applicant, and recorded in the registry of deeds, and that prior to the issue, that there be no issuance of a building permit for, or alteration of the site until the above conditions have been met. Second. Moved and seconded twice. <laughs> All in favor? Just the uh, comments of the town attorney are, have already, are going to be incorporated. I just want to make sure that's clear. The applicant already agreed to that, didn't Yes. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Sorry, John. I don't mean to just make you agree to something you haven't seen. All he's asking for is your easement uh, reference is a Schedule A, which is the meets and bounds description, and he wants that added. Oh, he hasn't seen that yet? No. Yep. With that clarification. With that clarification, all in favor? That is approved. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Mitchell. Uh, the next agenda item is a uh, request by Cloutier Construction for a subdivision review of a reconfigured nine-lot subdivision to be located at the end of Hamlin Street, uh, reviewed under Section 16-2-5, Amendment to a Previously Approved Subdivision. Uh, let me just remind the Board that uh, first we're going to review this for completeness to make sure we have sufficient information on this application. We then need to decide if we want to schedule a site walk and or a public hearing. So um, there are a few issues we have to decide on this application tonight, the first being completeness. Can. Take your time. Good evening. Uh, my name is Steve Blaze. I work with Pink and McGreer Consulting Engineers. Uh, with, with me tonight is Alan Burnell, our wetland scientist. And we're here on uh, behalf of uh, Michael Cloutier with Cloutier Construction uh, for a, an, an amendment to an existing subdivision off of Hamlin Street here in Cape Elizabeth. Um, just right off of Spurwink Ave and Stevenson Street. Uh, that's where it's located. Um, the, this plan, this layout that you see before you today, um, was presented at the January workshop. Um, this is the, that same layout. Um, what was determined at that workshop um, was, well, the, the uh, town indicated that, that they would like um, the developer to upgrade uh, Hamlin Street uh, about 400 feet of Hamlin Street and 150 feet of uh, Stevenson Ave um, to current road, uh, public roadway standards. We are doing that with this proposal. Um, another uh, major item uh, we discussed was uh, the uh, discussion of uh, grandfathering. Um, according to some previous applications uh, in Cape Elizabeth, each of the proposed lots uh, needs to have one of the Actually, I'll go back a little bit. I'll tell you the, what, we're, what we're doing here. The existing uh, subdivision has about 22 lots. They're about 50 feet wide each. There's a few of them that are 40 feet wide. Uh, they're generally pretty small lots, a tenth to an eighth of an acre. Um, what, we're, what we're proposing to do is to combine these lots uh, into nine lots, which are about, they meet the 10,000 square feet requirement in the code for a non-conforming lot. Um, that's what we're aiming for here. Um, so in that workshop, we also determined that each of those new lots has to have 
in its boundary at least one of the older lots for it to be a legal lot. So we've done that with this, with this plan. Um, if there's any questions at any point, uh, please feel free to ask. Um, so with this proposal, um, we are proposing about a, a thousand feet of roadway um, off of Stevenson Street. Um, that's how, how long Hamill Street will be in the end. Um, and uh, in that roadway, we're going to bring up uh, public sewer. Um, also, we're going to bring up public water. Um, I have met with um, the Portland Water District, and there is adequate water supply uh, for this project. Um, we believe this will make a, an, an excellent uh, subdivision. Um, we'll have a small, res you know, small neighborhood feel. The uh, homes will be up uh, closer to the street, um, and there'll be a sidewalk you know, interconnecting this whole neighborhood. Um, we feel that'll be uh, real nice. Um, there'll also be a landscape best lawn at six foot wide between the sidewalk and the street. Um, the street will be uh, 20, 22 feet wide, paved according to the town standards, um, with Cape Cod uh, curb, um, so the plows don't. That was a request by the uh, Public Works Department. Um, plows tend to catch the vertical curb. Um, with this roadway, um, because we're going up, there, there is a bit of, of slope through here. And uh, to keep with the uh, standards, the slope standards and the uh, road, the, the town roadway standards, we are going to need, we'll likely need to blast. Um, we are cutting a bit through there. Um, and in order um, to, to minimize the impacts to the surrounding neighborhood, if the plan board wishes, we, we can provide a blasting plan uh, just to, to set some criteria and uh, some limits. Um, we'll also provide, we have also provided an erosion and sedimentation control plan to minimize any sedimentation um, that would occur from construction. I have met with DEP, uh, let with, met with uh, Linda Kochemuller. Um, my direct question to her was um, if we needed a stormwater management permit for this project. Um, we do not. Um, we, we did, she did uh, email me on that to confirm, um, and I can provide that uh, to the board if you wish. Um, we will, however, need to file an NRPA permit, uh, Natural Resources Protection Act permit, for the upgrades uh, we are going to make to the, the existing uh, roadway culvert uh, in this location here. I'll get into more detail on that improvement. We'll also need to file a main general permit, uh, which is, uh, falls under the uh, NIPDES Act. It's a federal regulation administered by the DEP. Um, locally, we'll need to, uh, to file a uh, we we'll need to get a resource protection permit for that same crossing. Um, I did initially meet with, uh, with Maureen, the town planner, uh, Steve Harding, the town engineer, and uh, Mike Cloutier to discuss how we, uh, how we do, would incorporate this improved roadway um, in Hamlet Street and Stevenson Street. Um, it's, a, it's a wider roadway than it is today. It's just gravel. It's about, I don't know how wide, maybe 18 feet wide. It's, it's kind of narrow now. And uh, there will be some changes, and we wanted to talk about how we're going to incorporate it into this and how we'll blend into the grades and um, all the requirements there. Um, and after this meeting, we put together a set of plans and, um, and a permit application. We submitted that to the board. Um, and then a, a couple things happened. Um, that last meeting was changed by a week. And also, um, uh, Maureen and Steve indicated that they might might make sense to put a, some more information on the plans, um, further detail the stormwater system, how that's going to work, and the sanitary show all the utilities on the plans. Um, so what we did is we asked to be removed from the last agenda and be put on this agenda um, so that we could um, essentially uh, further the plans, not so they were just complete, so they were actually thought out even further. So I did meet with uh, Steve Harding and uh, and Bob Malley with the Public Works um, to discuss what they wanted to see on the plans and uh, any town standards that they, you know, it's going to be their roadway. Um, what do you guys want? That was basically the uh, purpose of the meeting. Um, we did, uh, we were practical about it. We went and walked the site afterwards to see how everything would, would fit in. Um, that, was a, that was a good meeting. Um, got a lot of great feedback. Um, One of the big items uh, in, our, in my meetings with uh, Steve and Bob um, was a concern of, I, I, I modeled this site um, using a, 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 a HydroCAD to, to model the stormwater. 
And what I found out, there's, there's a lot of barrier draining to, to, to this uh, culvert right here. And according to my calculations, that roadway, um, when we designed for the 25 year storm event, uh, which is the requirement of the code, um, that roadway overtops. It shows that as overtopping by, you know, a good half a foot, um, kind of cutting off some existing homes um, from, from access out. <laughs> and um, in order to, to make this roadway up to standard, um, it should not be overtopped in the 25-year storm. That was an important thing. Um, and Steve and Bob asked me to see what a 24-inch culvert would do there, um, how we might be able to design this um, without overtopping the roadway. So I did, um, I tried a few different trials and I did end up by lowering the culvert slightly and um, actually by about a foot or a foot and a half and by making it 24 inches, we do not overtop the roadway. And, the, and that would, with that, with that culvert, we would have a, a roadway that would be up to town standards. Um, so that was probably the, the, the largest item we discussed at that meeting. Um, I don't have anything underneath here. Huh. So we incorporated all this into this set of plans that you have in your packets today. Um, and uh, uh, planning staff and uh, Steve Harding has, have reviewed the plans again. And um, uh, towards the end of last week, we received the comments. Um, we, agree with, uh, we agree with the comments. Um, Steve's comments uh, were, were more... Um, making the plans read a little bit better, um, clarifying a few things, providing a little bit more detail, um, all, all pretty um, simple items that uh, we will incorporate into the plan. Um, currently, there's a four inch uh, sanitary service that um, comes back to this home here. Uh, Steve asked that, um, he thought it would be a good idea to upgrade that to the eight inch, and, and we do intend to do that. That's our intention with this plan. Um, so these homes will be connected to the new 8-inch sanitary that will be coming through here and connecting it to Stevenson Street. Or is this? Yeah, Stevenson Street. Um, also, he asked that we put in under drains to keep the, the roadway base dry. Um, we, we definitely agree with that. Um, it will prolong the life of that roadway. Um, there was a question about the street name. Um, we named it all Hamlin Street. We felt that... It, um, it was one street, but if uh, I believe the the uh, police department asked that we name this a different street, um, and we don't mind doing that at all. We we will ask: uh, Is there a list we go from? Do we call it maybe? Uh, I think it was Lynn Street that was abandoned back here. Um, we'll we'll work with with whatever we need to if that need, does indeed need to be renamed. Um, we are providing stop signs and street signs here. Um, while we're on that subject. Um, and we are, we, I don't know if I mentioned, but we are proposing a, a landscaped esplanade. There'll be a, a street tree about every 40 feet. Uh, be a real nice walk through there. Uh, takes a little while for the trees to, to mature to where they're providing shade, but it, it'll, be, um, it'll be a really nice neighborhood. Um, so essentially we've, um, we've heard of these plans quite a bit. Um, Feel we have a nice set of plans here. Um, at this point, any feedback from the from the board would be uh, would be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, the, the first issue we should address is completeness and whether we have sufficient information, and then we can move on from there. Um, I guess Maureen, I would ask you that have your concerns been addressed? Um, information you needed? Um, I think the biggest concern has been the, the wetlands. Uh, and Steve, is using your plan right behind you, in the middle of the site you can see this large green blob that gets even larger as it extends beyond the property. Uh, and I have spoken to the applicant about this, and I don't know if Mr. Bernal wants to get up and contradict me, but I believe the applicant has agreed to do some additional wetlands mapping off the site. Uh, the, the concern I have is that that property immediately butting this property, there is a plan in-house uh, that shows that is all RP1. Now, that doesn't mean that this applicant couldn't come in here 10 years later 
with a registered soil scientist and map it and say that it's not RP1, and that would not be accept that would be acceptable to the board. But the fact that we already have good information, and by good meaning better than our zoning map, it shows that it is RP1. And if it is RP1, it has a large buffer attached to it, which could dramatically impact the design of the subdivision. So for that reason, I think it's important for us to clear up what exactly that wetland is there, because it was a major focus for the town at that time. And I believe the applicant has agreed to do that work. Uh, the only other issue was that there's another wetland that runs along the rear of the subdivision, uh, which we believe is an RP2 wetland, and we've asked the applicant to uh, specify that on, on the plans. I think that's that's my major issue. Everything else was pretty minor, and, and I believe is 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 or is a, is or has been addressed. Okay, so so with the agreement to provide that additional information, we would have sufficient information to review this. Okay. Um, we, we I would ask for a motion on completeness, just. <coughs> Even though it's not uh, formally uh, an issue, so we can make sure that we have sufficient information. Unless anybody has any other questions on that. Morgan, I have a question for you. I'm, I'm still sufficiently new on the board. Um, what's required from the applicant in terms of? paperwork to address the concerns you've laid out there? Uh, they, they basically have to be able to identify the entire boundary of that lower wetland. Um, and they can do it using soils, using uh, plants. My guess is they'll probably use soils. It needs to be detailed enough so it, we usually get the actual soil types shown on the plan, but as long as we had a boundary that showed um, the the boundary between very poorly drained soils and poorly drained soils, that would be sufficient for us to determine whether or not it was an RP1 wetland. It's further complicated by the fact that we know, based on the current information that the, this applicant has submitted, that there are very poorly drained soils over there. It looks like there's less than one acre. If there's less than one acre, it automatically is downgraded to an RP2 wetland. If there's more than one acre, it's pretty much a whole new ballgame. That is, uh, that is correct. We're, we, Alan has, uh, we discussed this after Maureen and Alan talked. That's correct. Dave, I have a motion. Go ahead. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Cludia construction for amendments to the previously approved Hamlin Street subdivision and a resource protection permit to reconfigure the road and lots on nine lot subdivision located at the end of Hamlin Street be deemed complete. Second. No. Do you want to could, could we add a condition to that? On be, the, or no? On the completeness? Can, well, with the addition of the wetlands. You can't do that. Okay. Go ahead, Maureen. Adding conditions to completeness motions it has been... It's not complete. Bad form. It's, 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 we've done it once or twice in the past, and we've always regretted it. I, I, I understand what you're getting at, but okay. the... They've agreed to do it. Yes. <clears throat> so there's no second, but... Oh. Well, I'm trying to think, how do we deem it complete where we're waiting for information? That's what I'm trying to grab onto here, grasp onto. We do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems significant, though. I mean, this is not a, and my thought would be to. Well, we, if, if the board wishes, we can deem it not complete, since I, I believe we're going to have a public hearing right. on this another time and make sure that we have that information at the next meeting. I mean, as far as the applicant's concerned, it's not going to change, unless I'm wrong, the timing of this. Um, 
I'm, that's where I'm, that's exactly where I'm headed, John. Is 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 um. It seems to me we'd be better formed to defer that till the next meeting, with the understanding they've agreed to do it and give us the information we need. We're going to—it seems to me we're going to be doing a site walk here, and setting a public hearing that we can defer the completeness till then. Or, or is it better to? to that, those are my thoughts: is, is to defer it rather than leave an open issue like that. Barbara, I think John. Oh, a question, Maureen, could we have? Could we deem it incomplete, but agree that as long as we have this information next time that we can take the next step and have the public hearing, or can't we do that? Clearly you can do that, but to be honest, we've, you have gotten into the bad habit in the last couple of meetings where we've brought things to a meeting and it's been, it's been deemed complete and a public hearing scheduled for the same night. The risk is that we send notices out to members of the public that there's going to be a public hearing and then if you deem it incomplete, we've had all these people come here and they're not allowed to speak. So also, I have been approached more than once by people who feel passionately about a project and are irate that their one opportunity to speak is, is before there's a complete application in, in my office for them to review. So I, I realize that there's a bad form here and a bad form there, but you could make the position that the applicant has submitted uh, information about the wetlands on their site and that this is supplemental information akin to asking for details on the design of the sewer connections. I, I share the concern expressed by Peter that I, I think what's missing is important. And to me it's important enough to deem the application incomplete at this point. And that's, that's why we have debates on the motion, but, well, but, but I'm thinking... But, but Ma obviously, Maureen. if it, if we don't get the information, then we wouldn't approve the application. So, in a way, um, if, if we deem the application complete, at least we, we can go ahead and have the public hearing when it's noticed. And if we don't have the information at that point, the applicant runs the risk, risk of having the application denied, which is worse than having it ruled incomplete. Sure. Uh, and, just, and just to, I think Maureen's point, Jack, is that there is some information here. It's not like, I understand that. you know, it doesn't exist at all on the plan so far. I understand what John's saying, too, that it, in a way it would be better to deem it to complete, have the hearing, and if it's the supplemental information that we asked for isn't there, we would be in a position to deny the application, right. which is an enormous risk for the applicant. Right. You want to add something? Yeah, th this is also a very unique situation in that I don't think we've ever had a situation before where an application has come forward where we have detailed mapping of the adjacent property. Normally, we would rely on the information sure. presented by a professional, and there's nothing that the applicant has submitted that suggests it's it's wrong. Mm. Uh, we have something that may actually be out of date. Um, I don't think soils change that rapidly, but certainly they could. Um, and it's, I think we're, we're saying, look, we need to make sure this is right, and the applicant has agreed to spend the money. Um, it, obviously, it's up to the board to make the call. I'll second that motion. Well, I thought it was already, but hmm? I thought your mo Dave's motion to well, was already yeah, seconded. <laughs> So, okay. He seconded the second. Uh, okay, all in favor? All right, so that's deemed complete. Now, uh, I believe from listening to the rest of the board that we all feel there should be a public hearing. Uh, then the next question is, do we want to conduct a site walk? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. All right. And... When do we want to do that? <laughs> Memorial Day. <laughs> Already have a meeting. <laughs> the let's see. The next meeting would be June fifteenth. So. Um, When's the parade? No. <laughs> the weekend after. I'm going to be away on Memorial Day. I'm just kidding. I didn't really and expect. I'll be away. You could. Go ahead without me. That would be all right. Uh, the weekend after that is the what? 
can't make it any other weekend. How about the 12th? Well, that's okay. I is it June 6th? The other thing is we do have l long light in the evening. Yeah, we could go Sidewalk might be a better idea and easier for people. In, uh, right. Good point. Saturday morning since <laughs> we don't get that opportunity year-round. During the week after work? Is that either, either before or after? Before or after work? It's light early. It's kind of late. I'm thinking right after work, 5.15, 5.30 might be a good idea and rather than wait till after dinner. It's a good idea. Okay. Thursday. Uh, 10th? June 10th? Yeah, with the meeting on the 15th, that might be. For the applicant, if there's anything that gets brought up at the meeting, if you can yeah. before the submission deadline, they have a better opportunity. But certainly. How about the 3rd? June 3rd? Thursday the 3rd? Uh, I may have a problem with that date. Um, Stay before Memorial Day weekend? It's after. 27th? Yeah, no, can you, can you do it? Oh. May 27th? Uh, I forgot to bring my all-knowing pocket calendar, but... Um, okay. It was Monday the 7th after work. Monday the what? Seventh? Is that enough time for the applicant to get went the bid? The deadline for the applicant is the last day in, in May. So, I mean, so we should have it before then? We try to do it before that day, it's better. But the 24th, before the, oh, before May 24th? Oh, okay. That's a Monday. We, I'm we going to How about week. Monday the 24th? That'd be good. Okay. 5.30? Monday, May 24th, 5.30. So that's this coming Monday? Yes. Good. Thank you. And you will remind all of us with an email? Mm -hmm. That's good for you? Not more than once. Works so for you me. Have to be there? Yeah, I've been flipping back and forth on each date. That, that one works. You have that the 24th? Monday the 24th at 5.30. Yeah. Okay. That's good day for me. Okay. Uh, do we have a further motion? We're not going to have a hearing. Right. We're going to... Okay. Yeah. Be it further ordered that the above application be tabled to the regular June 15, 2004 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Shore Acres Tower Overlay District. This was a request from the Cape Elizabeth Town Council to the Planning Board to consider creating a tower overlay district at the Portland Water District Water Tower lot in Shore Acres. Uh, public hearing has been scheduled and we need to review this request in accordance with section 19-10-3. Um, before we get to the public hearing, I just want to summarize where we are on this, uh, and perhaps Maureen can explain why we were here, and also uh, we did have a workshop session and discuss some issues that probably should be brought out uh, before the public hearing. So Maureen, can you just give us a brief synopsis of why we're here and where we are? Uh, the town council was considering a tower overlay district proposal at the corner of Fowler Road and Bowery Beach Road. And at, I believe it was their March workshop, um, they um, decided that they wanted to have the planning board take a second look at a tower opportunity in Shore Acres. So this is a referral to the Planning Board from the Town Council to look at the uh, potential designation of a tower overlay district on the water tower site in Shore Acres. 
the water tower site is i believe eleven avon road what is important to note is there is an existing water tower on the site it's approximately eighty feet tall but the site itself is relatively small and if a tower overlay district was designated on that lot with the one hundred twenty five percent height setback that is part of the tower overlay district designation the maximum tower height for that lot would probably be about sixty feet which is lower than the tree line uh... the assumption being that a tower lower than the tree line wouldn't function very well and no one would, would choose to build one however i do believe that if the the site was designated as a tower overlay district it would provide an opportunity for antennas to be mounted on the existing water tower without the use of stealth technology that is that they could mount antennas on the water tower that you could actually see uh, but there also is a limit from what i understand on the size right you, you couldn't put another tower on top of the water tower anything you erected attached to the water tower would have to fit the definition of an antenna and the technology is actually moving in a direction towards smaller antennas not taller antennas so i mean if you if you're looking at an eighty foot tall water tower and you know that each set of antenna need to have a vertical separation of approximately ten feet there is limited ability of the water tower to accom accommodate multiple users so um, again and i know we discussed this at the workshop there is a there is a, a requirement of in the present tower overlay district regulation that limits the size of a tower to 125 percent of the uh, the setback limits the height and a good deal of our discussion was given that limitation and given the size of the site any approval of this as a tower overlay district would only allow a tower that would be shorter than the tree line in that area which is probably not what um, anyone who would want to place a tower there or would want to put an antenna there would would want or need so much of our discussion was whether that limitation had been considered um, when this uh, particular district was discussed. So I just wanted to bring that out in case people weren't aware of that regulation. Yeah. The other point that seems to, seems to have been brought out at the workshop was even if you assumed what Maureen said, that you could put a tower on the roof on the top of the tower, on the existing water tower, mm -hmm. if you could put an antenna there, you, you still wouldn't get an increase in coverage that would make the whole project worthwhile. So it, from, from the carrier's perspective. So it didn't seem likely, given all of the restrictions and the accomplishments that would be very little accomplishment that would happen, that anybody would even bother to take advantage of it. So it seemed that based on those projections, we weren't really gaining anything by approving or recommending. We don't approve anything on this by recommending to the council that they should approve this. Um, and we are going to get to the public hearing. Oh, I'm but, sorry. But Mr. Hatem is talking about is we were shown various uh, coverage plans where they uh, they try to predict what the coverage would be for a certain height tower in a certain location and that's what Maureen is putting up on the board uh, I think it, it, it was from if I remember our discussion the the incremental if any increase in coverage from putting a tower on top of the water tower was was slight if if at all correct and i think that's what those uh tests shown so um with all that as a backdrop we did schedule a public hearing tonight on this issue and i'd like to open the public hearing and invite anyone to make comments please come up state your name and your address and we would be happy to hear you I'm Priscilla Armstrong and I live at 18 Avon Road and my property circles around the water tower on the um, Trundy Road side and uh, here I am again, and I appreciate 
your uh, understanding of the limitations that what could be built there really wouldn't make much of a difference in cell phone coverage. And I, and I have to say that if it really was a matter of the police and the fire department really feeling that if they were trying to rescue someone or put out a fire in my neighborhood and could not do their job because they could not have adequate communication, I would not be here tonight. But that does not seem to be the case. And I do wish to um, bring out the point to the board that I do own uh, 10 acres that surround this property and I have always had the possibility that um, a cell tower in my neighborhood would reduce my property, which I do not believe, um, reduce the value of my property, which I do not believe you can enact something that will reduce the property of property value. Um, I don't really feel that this would benefit my neighborhood at all, and I um, certainly know that the water tower was 75 feet away from my neighbor's house. It's still seven, four years ago, or whenever it was we were here before, it's still the same amount of distance, and I really do urge you to not support this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Penny Parson, and I am a co-owner with my husband Joe of our property at 9 Avon Road. Um, we bought the water tower property. Um, if you looked at, uh, I think we circulated a few months ago, a, or a month ago, a map showing how close the water tower property is to our house. In fact, our entire uh, house would be in the fall down zone if they had enabled a 180 foot tower there. Uh, Needless to say, you know, I don't think the members of our neighborhood are gaining anything by having antennae on the top of the water tower. We actually get excellent coverage at our house. And it's the people who are downslope that are, you know, get more limited coverage. I think there are very few places in Shore Acres that AT&T does not reach. I drove all over the neighborhood. Um, another issue we have here is that uh, we live on a very tiny, it's almost like a lane. It's not a full width road. Uh, two cars cannot pass on our road. And if we were, you know, when you get antennae, you get buildings that come with them, and you get servicemen. And, you know, the people that service the water company tower are, you know, they're fine and dandy, and they don't come that often. And there is a man that comes and mows the lawn. But we're not talking about people working for five or six companies coming up there on a regular basis. Uh, there are presently, I believe, two antennae on top of the water tower, which belong to the water company, and that is... Um, you know, the, the remote operation of the tower. And I, you know, I think that's a very legitimate use for that, and it helps their business. But I, you know, I honestly don't feel uh, that, uh, you know, commercial providers should be able to, you know, benefit at our location and also devalue our property by not, you know, not only having the uh, antenna there, but by having the people that come and service them. Um, I found something very interesting. Uh, the, uh, legislative analyst report that was presented by, to the uh, San Francisco County Board of Supervisors in October, and I think I sent the web link to Maureen and to uh, Michael McGovern, and uh, in San Francisco, they have come up with a list of preferred location sites, uh, the most preferred uh, being a uh, publicly used structure, like a police or fire station, libraries, utility structures, et cetera. And it goes down to limited preference sites, which are uh, buildings in neighborhood commercial districts, if good faith efforts were first made to secure a preferred location site above. And way at the bottom of the list, um, disfavored site was buildings in zoned residential districts. Now, the water company property is a uh, 150 feet on each side parallelogram. And there's, that's not a whole lot of room from the center of that property, 75 feet to anybody else's property. And, you know, there are seven other neighbors who, whose property would be impacted by something. And I think that's, you know, definitely not a preferred location. And if the, uh, you know, if I can indulge myself and, you know, ask the uh, members of the planning board to take a look at what they came up with in San Francisco, and that might be a, you know, possible guideline 
to make this, you know, further decisions on where to place towers. And hopefully come up with a location that would benefit people in Cape Elizabeth. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't believe that this, would, <clears throat> this particular location would benefit people. And uh, it certainly wouldn't benefit people in Shore Acres. Why don't I just pass, just pass these around? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bob Cronin. I live at 7 Avon Road. When this issue was visited four or five years ago, I thought we had put it to rest. It is the introduction of a commercial enterprise into a residence A or C zone. I'm not sure which the water tower is. It's hard to see it. A residence C, according to the town's comprehensive plan, is land reserved for the future development of Cape Elizabeth, supposedly kept safe and rural. Why you would want to introduce a commercial enterprise into a residence C or residence A or abutting a residence C zone, I don't understand. I don't think it's, comp it's, it's compatible with the town comprehensive plan. Moreover, as I read the law, you can only change a zoning when the adjacent property values are not negatively impacted. Now, why you want to extend the non-conforming use, whose agenda this is, what purpose is served, I don't understand. I thought this was put to bed four years ago, and now it's coming up again uh, to serve, to what purpose, I don't know. I can't find a dead spot in Cape Elizabeth with my cell phone. I don't want any more commercial enterprises being introduced into my residential area. Uh, the tower is non-conforming. I hope that someday it would go away. They tear it down as not needed. And now you're, you're, you're establishing it to go on forever with, if, you, if you do the overlay zoning. I don't think it's compatible with the town comprehensive plan. I think it is illegal to, uh, to change the zoning when it negatively impacts the, uh, the adjacent property values. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Parson, 9 Avon Road. Briefly, uh, what I'd like to state here is, again, what some of my neighbors and my wife have said, that <coughs> excuse me, uh, negative impact. We've been there before. Uh, I really don't want to go there again. But I would urge the planning board and the council to take a look at new proposals that have been made elsewhere in the town. In particular, I think uh, Seth Sprague and uh, Mike Moles perhaps found another spot, something that will benefit many people and not uh, adversely affect others, whether it be by traffic, devaluation, uh, people asked me before, well, it, it won't devaluate the property. Well, I was a real estate broker for 14 years. Uh, I know how the system works. I'm not a broker now, but I haven't forgotten everything that I learned in 14 years. So I would uh, encourage you all to put Avon Road to bed for the last time and move on and find a site that would not only benefit uh, the cellular, you know, the phone usage of the town, but police, fire, etc. And uh, I believe this is a town that is compassionate enough and that cares enough about everybody and everybody's well-being to do just that. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Okay, we're going to close the public hearing. Um, again, this is we are in a position where we're being asked to make a recommendation. The uh, ultimate 
decision on this and probably will be another public hearing, although I guess I should commit one way or the other, but the ultimate decision on this is the town council. Yes. So, um, but we can only gather the information we can and, and make our own recommendation, and uh, we appreciate hearing from, from everyone. We also did hear information on other sites in town when that was sent to us for recommendation, so we do have that perspective uh, as well. Uh, any discussion on the request? We have discussed this at length in workshop and otherwise, so uh, Barbara. Well, I would just like to say that I don't think this site makes very much difference at all in terms of the area, and I agree with what people said about their property. I think that's very important that we maintain rural areas and uh, residential areas as residential areas, and we all know that there is equipment that does go in with this and that things do change once you put in a tower overlay district. And so I personally stand, my vote is against it. Uh, I, would, I would agree with Barbara without reservation. I think that the gain that would come from this tower is so negligible compared to the impact of changing the zoning for residential area that I'm totally against this recommendation. I would like to ask Maureen a couple of things that were questioned at our workshop as to whether there's any more information relative to the other sites at this point that might be my shed sense, some light here. Yeah, my sense is that everything is on hold pending planning board's recommendation this evening. <laughs> it's like putting us on the spot. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the issues of the other sites, we, although we have discussed it and has come before us before, isn't before us right now. Um, although I agree with you, it certainly is, is relevant information. Uh, but So what, we gain nothing by, by putting this off for another meeting, right? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I mean, we've, uh, my view is we, we've gotten a f significant amount of information on it. I, I guess where I come out is... Obviously, there are concerns about the the people that live there, but even putting those aside, for me, to vote to create an overlay district that won't accomplish what the overlay district's supposed to do doesn't make sense regardless of where it is. Um, to, to vote to make this an overlay district to put in a cell tower that's limited so that it won't basically uh, expand any sort of service, uh, I, I, just, I just don't see it. Now, there are obviously a lot of other reasons not to, given the, the uh, tenor of the neighborhood and, and all that, and I, I appreciate that. I guess what I'm saying is I, I don't even get there when it doesn't accomplish what, 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 it's, what it's there for. So... Um, Anyway, Barbara. Can I have a motion for the board to consider? Be it ordered that based on the board on the information submitted and the facts presented, the planning board does not recommend the designation of a tower overlay district on the Portland Water District Water Tower site located at 11 Avon Road. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, so that's our so move, that's our recommendation. Thank you. Okay, we do have uh, another agenda item, which is The uh, next item on the agenda is, again, we have been referred by the town council with a request to review paper streets located in the Shore Acres neighborhood north of Trundy Road for possible vacation. Uh, we also have a public hearing scheduled on this issue tonight as well. Um, 
again, Maureen, maybe you can uh, give us a short summary of how this issue is before us and what's involved, and then we can go on from there. What I would recommend the board do is, is open the memo to the last page that has the uh, map. It's like this. Uh, oh, this is black and white, though, right? Yeah, yours is black and white. <laughs> get a color one. Just what we have before. Same on. Uh, what you see before you, uh, everything in dark blue are existing town roads. Um, the, the dark blue stipple is the existing section of Overlook Lane. And what the, the town has asked, as you can see, that there's a dark brown, there's a, a fleshy colored, peach colored. Those, we don't have sorry. color, we only have bruises. Okay, let's, let's do it this way then. Everything that's not white is, is either gone, it's been vacated, or it actually exists as a road. So the only thing that's left for you to look at is the stuff that shows up as white on your photocopy. Everything else, this, this section of Overlook Lane currently exists. Um, this long road up in here was a paper street that was vacated by the council previously. That's the red on your map. Pardon me? The I red on, the red on your right. map. Right. Okay. This section over here has also been vacated. So the only thing that's left that hasn't been vacated and is a paper street north of Trundy Road is this short section of Overlook Lane right here. It should show up as white on your photocopy. That section of all of the Todden Road extension, which shows up as white. And then this little strip here of Elizabeth Road, which also shows up as white. Now there's a current uh, request by Mr. Panansky, and I've tried to put the names, the name of the first property owner in the assessor's uh, database, and I need to make that clear that there may be multiple owners of these lots, and I only put the first name down because I only had enough room to do that. Um, but you can see that Mr. Panansky owns land on Overlook Lane, and he also owns land on Trundy Road. On the piece that is between Trundy Road and Overlook Lane, there's a driveway, and there are at least one family that lives on Overlook Lane that is using that driveway to get onto Overlook Lane on a regular basis instead of coming all the way down and using this little section of Wombeck and then doubling back on Overlook Lane. Is that on the Madigan side of Penansky's property or on the other side? Yes, yes. It's the lot that's between McDuffie and Madigan. Okay. And on that lot, you could even sketch it in. You see where the A is in Penansky? That's where the driveway is. And it connects right, it connects Trundy Road to Overlook Lane on the west side of Trundy Road. So it actually goes right through the development lot? Yes, it does. And as I said, there's at least one family, not Mr. Panansky, but another family who owns and has an easement to actually cross through that driveway. So one of the concerns that's been raised is Mr. Panansky would like to vacate Overlook Lane so that he can reunite his parcels so he doesn't have this paper street dividing it. And I need to make, every, make sure everyone is clear that a paper street only exists on paper. If you went out there in the world, it would look like somebody's lawn or somebody's yard. Um, Pub what? The public presently has rights over that land right now. The public, the public has rights and individual lot owners in that subdivision sure. also have rights. So it's, it's, a, it's an area where a road could be constructed if the people who have rights to that road, if anyone in the subdivision or the town wanted to build a road on a paper street, they could do so. And in fact, we do have paper streets in town where people have used them to create driveways. One of the most current, the, the one of the most recent one is the private access way permit the planning board granted off of Gladys Road in the Jewett Road neighborhood mm. near Great Pond. So there was a back lot there that a, a paper street was used to create a driveway in it to access that lot. So there's, there's two issues, there's, there's several issues. And what I tried to do in my memo is try to identify the issues by street. And if that's okay, I'd like to keep going from there, unless there's any questions. Yeah, I have a quick one. Um, at the time this was presented, it was this request, but there was also a request by the town manager to look at vacation of streets town-wide. Well, not are we, are we not addressing that tonight? Or, or he, yeah, neighborhood-wide? I actually sat down with the manager and said, okay, what streets do you want us to consider? 
and he said everything in the shore acres neighborhood north of trendy road and that's why you're looking not only at overlook lane but also could road extension and elizabeth road so this this the, this ideas are as far as town manager wants us to yes, go right now. Yes, I'm okay. confident in telling you that these are the only ones you're supposed to be looking at. Okay. <laughs> I didn't really want any more. I spent a lot of time just, to, just getting to that point. Sure. Okay. So okay. Should I go keep ahead. going? Yes, okay. you should. So the first, the first road, the one that started the whole thing going, is Overlook Lane. Can everyone find that road? Overlook Lane is mostly existing. And I say existing because it's a private road right-of-way is only 15 feet wide and I have tried to approximate the dark color shows you where Overlook Lane currently exists. The remainder of Overlook Lane, which is this, this western end that connects up to the Carden, Todden Road extension, does not exist. It only exists on paper and that's the section I believe that Mr. <coughs> Nansky could, could be eligible for having vacated. Um, but there are two concerns with that. One is that even though that portion of Overlook Lane does not exist, it does exist on paper, and there is the potential for turning Overlook Lane from, a, on paper, a dead-end road to a, a loop road. And you do have a memo from the fire chief, and I've also expressed concerns that dead-end roads present, present emergency access concerns all the time. And if you were to eliminate Overlook Lane, you would, on paper, be making it a dead-end road. And is that a good thing to do? So that's the first question. Yes. <coughs> Maureen, not only are we making it a dead end road, but there's no turnaround there for um, no. equipment. Correct. So wouldn't that have to be put in? Well, uh, Mr. I believe Paul Thielen is here representing Mr. Panansky, and he and I have had a lot of conversations about this. The problem is that Overlook Lane actually functions fairly well right now if you can use the driveway on Mr. Panansky's lot. If you count the driveway, Overlook Lane actually is a loop road. And so Mr. Thielen has spoken to his client, and apparently he is willing to grant any rights that we already have in Overlook Lane, in fact, over his, his driveway that's on his road, in exchange for vacating that section of Overlook Lane. So what that would do is it would allow the town to create a legal loop road where we already have a functional loop road. The, I mean, there would be some, some legal exchange that would have to occur, and we'd have to finalize that, but it would be something along the lines of an emergency access easement. The second problem, the second challenge, however, is that the Penansky lot that's north of Overlook Lane is actually a compilation of lots, which could be separated out again. And although Mr. Panansky has, based on his attorney's representations, absolutely no intention of building on the lot that is abutting Katahdin Road, and there is enough vacant land there with an existing grandfather lot to create a new house there. If that happened and Overlook Lane were vacated, someone would have to build a driveway from Katahdin Road at extension. And, you know, the thought is that most of Overlook Lane already exists, and Katahdin Road doesn't exist at all that it might be a greater impact on the neighborhood if you had to build a driveway down Katahdin Road extension versus creating a, a connection over to Overlook Lane. Uh, representing Mr. Panansky again, Mr. Thielen has offered to put a restriction on the Panansky property that states that any new development would have to have access off of Overlook Lane, which would address that concern. Are we done with Overlook Lane? I'm sorry. For the, we go, I, for the time that's, being, okay, go ahead. Good. The second one is Katahdin Road Extension. Can everyone find that? Mm -hmm. uh, Katahdin Road Extension, again, is completely paper street. Um, the only concern that's been addressed, and you do have a comment from the, from the Conservation Commission, is that this is a great opportunity to preserve a connection between the Shore Acres neighborhood and the, the Eastfield neighborhood. If something was preserved in the Katahdin Road extension right-of-way for pedestrian access. Is it green or something? Yes, yes, because if we don't have rights, we have to buy them. So this is an inexpensive way to be able to acquire something. And there's no plans to do anything now, but the question would be, do we want to preserve rights so that we could look at putting in some kind of a green belt trail connection between those two neighborhoods in the future? So that's the issue that's... And so how is that done? By Either you keep Katahdin Road extension 
and do not vacate it, yeah. or you you allow it to be vacated but retain within it uh, an easement or, or pathway that's wide enough only to accommodate a trail. Typical Greenbelt trail easements are 15 feet wide. Now what's the depth? Well, yeah, what, what the whole that? thing out. What does that get us? Unless someone's concerned that that road could be built in the future, that would be that's the only thing it would get you. Otherwise, just just keep the whole thing. Okay. And then the third road is Elizabeth Road, and there's been nothing that we can identify that is of need to retain that as, as any rights in there. We can see no reason not to vacate that as a paper street. Uh -huh. Further, I only put the name Elizabeth Road on there because that's what I found in the original subdivision plan. There is currently Elizabeth Road somewhere else in Cape Elizabeth. This is not the same road. <laughs> We should be specific if we do decide to. <laughs> yeah. Does that cover it? That's, unless anyone has any questions. Mr. Chairman, um, I am an abutter to one of the paper streets that are under consideration, so to avoid any appearance of conflict of interest, I'd like to recuse myself from this discussion. All right. Thank you, Mr. Keneally. David? I have a question or clarification. Elizabeth Street is written on here. And it comes to Reef Road. Correct. Does that actually exist? No, it's Paper Street. If you so went it, out there today, it's just trees and yard. And okay. So that's so that should be black on, on my end. So we'd be eliminating it from Reef Road all the way over to uh, joining Jack Keneally's property. Then. No, I meant. Well, the, that other section was, was already vacated. Yep, okay. Okay. Um, okay, we, we are going to have a public hearing, so everyone will have a chance to uh, give their comments. So let me open the public hearing, and looks like, Mr. Phelan, you're first. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I thought it was a name call. That's why I came up. That's all right. Go right ahead. Um, I will say Mr. Financy is here this evening, and if there are questions for him, um, he's available. I, I just want to make a couple of uh, adjunct comments, if I may, to what Maureen was saying. Um, the, it, it strikes me that, f first of all, what we're talking Overlook Lane, or what's now called Overlook Lane, was originally laid out on a 1911 plan, so we're over 90 years now that this skinny strip, 15 foot wide uh, was uh, denoted on a plan. It wasn't even denoted as a street, by the way, I, or at least there was no name to it. I assume one might argue, well, what, else, what other reason would it be there for? I don't know, but it certainly isn't of the size or dimension that a street typically laid out on a plan would be. That issue aside, assuming if it were ever accepted as a public street, you'd have to be one way. Um, and so people that live on one end of it then would certainly set, they would have to go all the way down in order to come up through it. it right now it's utilized totally as a private driveway in essence for the Finansky property, the Kelly properties, and uh, the Madigan properties, and the Boggs and Medi, I understand, access at the other end. If, uh, if, however, the concern is, as you pointed out, Maureen, that the town still nonetheless has some residual concern that they still want to see or make sure that there is a loop there from a public standpoint, we're, we're agreeable to granting a public easement over that, well, it's lot 109, the Penansky property. Um, I guess I can show you on, for the board members' benefit, better here. Uh, it's a little bit larger. This is the um, driveway that is accessing the Penansky property, but is also used by Kelly now. And um, it is over this portion, I guess, uh, of uh, what's called Overlook Lane that we would be prepared to grant access so that this concept of a loop is, is uh, preserved, and there isn't the danger of a, of a dead end. Um, 
What also struck me as you were speaking is that apparently there is concerns about this being ultimately or someday utilized as access for this, for a house that's built here. Maybe the answer to that is that this is vacated as well. I mean, that's not our petition, but certainly if it's in the town's interest, we would join in it. We wouldn't oppose it. If that gets vacated, then that stops that issue, does it not? And but even beyond that, if there's still concern, as I indicated to you, we would be willing to condition any building approval upon requiring access not over Katahdin. We have also had some, I will tell you, some discussions with a neighbor prior to the meeting tonight. Mrs. Petrick, pardon me, I'm awful on names. I guess it's Petrick. Petrick? Who is here tonight. And they have expressed a concern similar to the one that was expressed by Mr. Keneally a couple of years ago with relation to Bayview Road. And that is, gee, if you vacate that, we would sure like to not have any building, therefore, the building envelope increased. That is to say, we would like the building envelope to remain the same so that it can't come any closer to our property. That's the concern that I'm understanding from those folks. And we are agreeable to entering into an agreement, a vacation conditioned upon, if you will, that the building envelope does not get increased. Do you understand what the issue is? What happens is, ultimately, half of that street then goes to this lot and half goes, seven and a half feet goes there. And the concern is that you would be able to build, therefore, seven and a half feet closer to them. We're saying, no, we'll condition it on that we won't do that. Trying to address every nuance here. I'm glad to try to answer any questions. Yeah, go ahead. Why don't you come up to the podium, introduce yourself. Thank you, Chair. Just real quickly, I should introduce myself. I'm Tom Pinanski. This is my neighborhood I grew up in. I grew up down the road in Highview Road. Some of you probably maybe knew my parents, et cetera. I'm a graduate of Cape Elizabeth High School, class of 77. The neighborhood's real important to me, and I really want to make sure it stays as nice as it is now for a long, long time. And I do intend to own the property for a long, long time. And part of this came up, too, with the tax changes. You know, while the way those lots are now, they're separately assessed with different numbers. And one other issue, I think a lot of the people in the neighborhood are concerned, some future owner trying to sell off a piece of land and build a second house. I'm also, I mentioned this to Paul, I'm also willing, if you wanted to rationalize it and combine it into just one lot with one tax number at some point, which means, I think, in the future only one house, one home could be built on it, that's okay, too. I mean, I really want to be cooperative, but right now that piece of the paper road, and I know some of my neighbors here know it better than I, oh, Penny knows this, it goes, I think, about 10 feet in front of the, front of the front porch, if you ever went out and looked there, that little piece. And I, I know it pretty well, because I used to wander around those lots without an easement when I was a kid playing capture the flag in the neighborhood, and it hasn't changed in 30, the 30 years I remember. So anyway, I just wanted to introduce myself, let people know, you know, this is my hometown, um, um, and the neighborhood's real important to me, too. And I want, you know, I want it to stay nice, and I hope you know, I'm not trying to cause any difficulties for neighbors. If anything, I think I'm trying to help the neighborhood stay as nice as it is, as it is now. Thank you. Anyone else? Come right up. Thank you, John. My name is Jerry Lashore. I live at 18 Hydro Road. Um, my property is on the corner of Katahdin and Hydro Road. And my neighbor and I share a driveway. As a matter of fact, most of my driveway and a good portion of my backyard is probably the paper road. Uh, I'm in agreement with the town manager about using all those roads up there. 
don't mind a trail, but that's going to be a challenge to really put that together because it's high. And it's going to cause a lot of problems. I also worry a little bit about anything being built. Of course, I have no control over that, but it is a high hill, and anything is going to run right down in my yard. Uh, other than that, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Steve Goldstein, 9 Highview Road, and I've been there long enough now that I remember Mr. Panansky's parents. Uh, we overlap <laughs> by quite a few years. Uh, my main concern as being somebody who's downhill on Highview Road is that I don't want to see an opportunity that Katahdin Road extension is the only way to access these properties in the future. So I want to make sure that Katahdin Road extension, uh, that's my concern, is not developed. Um, as as um, Gary Lawshore said, it's a very, very um, steep piece of property. Uh, we already have a lot of problem in the neighborhood after heavy, heavy rains uh, with the, the streams opening up and coming down the hill. And that road would wash out and come right down on us also. But uh, we have other concerns. Um, I would be fine with retiring uh, Katahdin Road Extension as a paper street. But I certainly um, like uh, Maureen's suggestion to uh, create a green belt easement on it because I know my kids cut through there all the time to see their friends in Shore Road. Uh, so I think the green belt easement might might be a nice way to do that. Thank you. And so I, I'm not quite sure how this will wind up. I, I have no um, recommendation, but. Yes. Yeah, my wife married Pinto, and I'm also representing her. Um, so, so in summary, we're fine with retiring Katahdin Road, uh, Overlook Road extension as a paper street, as long as Katahdin Road extension is also retired as a paper street at the same time, um, granting Greenbelt easement for it. Only Greenbelt right. easement. Okay. Thank you. This is my paper street file since 1987. Um, I'm Margie Kelly. We live at 9 Overlook Lane. In fact, our son sold Tom Panansky the property. We do have safety issues, my husband and I do, with regard to any dead-end street. There are legal questions down the road should Overlook Lane be vacated beyond our property line. Now, if it's vacated at this point, there's still a little tiny strip that we would not have a right to. And I know Mr. Thaler was very kind and said we did have access to this. But things do change. Uh, we've dealt with this too many times before. Therefore, we're not happy with that entire section being deleted. We understand, though, that Tom Hansky has changed his original request. The actual route of Overlook Lane is already confusing. With every lost sightseer, oil truck, or delivery man turning around in our driveway since Overlook Lane disappears. We'd appreciate your help in keeping Overlook Lane a viable path to our home, which, by the way, is the home of the fourth generation of Kellys. And as far as the street not having had a name, it was Trundy Road Rear, and it's been that since 1909 when our house was built. Trundy Road Rear? Yes. Thank you. I'm Eric Copperman. I live on 10 Highview Road. Um, my only concern here is uh, what Steve was uh, hesitating uh, to a few minutes ago was uh, that Katahdin Road extension at some point um, may be developed. Um, and, uh, what we have here on Highview Road now is a cul-de-sac. Um, it's one of the reasons why I moved into this neighborhood in the first place, bought my property. Um, I have three little children who, um, and there's tons of children on Highview Road in Eastfield uh, that consider this a cul-de-sac and a child safe uh, street. So my main concern really is to keep the cul-de-sac um, I also believe that uh, the value of my property uh, would go down if the cul-de-sac was 
disturbed and Katahdin Road extension was uh, created at some point. Um, the second thing uh, uh, is that uh, I think Greenbelt uh, going through uh, uh, Katahdin Road extension is a nice idea if it's amendable to the two property owners who abut that, uh, which would be the Keneally and Lewis House. Um, you know, uh, since uh, the traffic would be going right by their houses. Uh, both their properties, uh, the paper road, uh, um, uh, it would go right by the Keneally's uh, 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 house. I don't know how many people would be uh, from, their, from their house, but a, a great deal of uh, the charm of their property would be lost as well as the LaSalle's. Their driveways go onto the paper road. And uh, I just asked that, that all this be considered. Um, and, uh, and maybe a good compromise would be um, you know, uh, retiring part of the Katana Road extension. Um, maybe the last, uh, you know, 50% of the uh, of the north part of the Katana Road extension, 25% uh, of it, um, just to have the lots have some kind of access up there, but not disturb anybody else's property is, uh, and make everybody a winner out of this. Um, but I think the ideal thing would be just to retire Katana Road extension uh, altogether. So, thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, Doug Spicer, I, um, 26 Trundy Road. Um, so we abut Katahdin Extension on the uh, far side of the McDuffie's property. And we have two lots along Katahdin Extension, one of which would only be accessible by Katahdin Extension. And, however, we have no um, intention of, of building on that lot, and in fact are, are in the process of probably consolidating it to one lot. So, and we are very much for vacating Katahdin Road because we would not want that to be um, developed. Thank you. My name is Sheila Mayberry and I'm here representing myself and my husband, Alan McDuffie. We live at 30. Trundy Road, uh, and our our lot um, sits behind Mr. Panansky's lot 108. Uh, Katahdin Road runs down the side of our lot and around and back of our lot, and then down to High View. Overlook uh, also runs behind our lot over to Mr. Panansky's lot. Um, so we are in fact surrounded by both of these paper streets. Um, with, with regard to the overlook request, uh, our, our main concern is that the building envelope remain the same on uh, lot 106 uh, if, if the vacation is granted. Uh, we, we would like to be able to not have that area uh, uh, developed. It's, it's, it's all wooded now. There's habitat there. We, we see deer and fox, and sometimes we've seen a moose back there. Uh, for, so for, for those obvious reasons, uh, uh, we would not want the building envelope to change. And we also did discuss this prior to the hearing um, with Mr. Thalen and Mr. Kanansky, and that is a possibility. Uh, so that, that, those are our concerns with, with that request. Uh, we do think it's justified that the piece of overlook that goes right between their garage and their house should be vacated. Um, we have no problem with that. Uh, the, the other issue with respect to Katahdin, uh, as we, we agree with everyone else's uh, position here, it seems that the vacation of Katahdin uh, would be the best uh, result in this, uh, with the addition that there could be some walking path running uh, from Trundy to Highview, although I, I understand there are some concerns about what would happen down at down at Highview, um, but from our point of view, that would uh, eliminate the possibility of any access being built 
to Lot 108 if ever in the future that lot were, be, were to be built. Um, so we, we would concur in the thought that Katahdin should be vacated uh, with an easement to the town for some kind of walking path. I heard the, the number 15, a 15 foot wide walking path. I don't, pardon me? I'm sorry. It, it would be the easement, the walking path would not be that wide. It would be like oh. a little five foot wide pathway. Five foot wide? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so I, I don't know what that process entails, but I hope that if the uh, Conservation Commission does look at that, that they do consult with the neighbors on that. Thank you. Thank you. My name is <coughs> Ted Osbeck. I live at 20 Highview Road. I remember the building so very well. Um, my major concern is if you, if any development of Katahdin Road extension is over the 38 years that I've lived there, 36 years that I've lived there, that has grown into a green belt per se, as it is. We used to have terrible water problems. If that was developed with any road down there, even a trail, it would break through that stuff and it would really create a uh, water problem back in the neighborhoods of La Shores, myself, Michael McGovern. You vacate it, fine, but just so not see anything else there. I'm Mary Pinto. I want to give seconds from Nine High View Road. <laughs> Um, I, I live with my husband and kids on Nye Highview Road. Um, Highview Road is at the point that we live um, at a blind corner. It's a very dangerous corner and whenever we have fast traffic coming down the road we always have to be careful of the kids at our house and the kids across the street. I'm extremely concerned about the potential to that road, Highview Road, ever being opened up to the trendy neighborhood. I don't quite understand what your terminology means, vacating paper streets and the implications of that, but if vacating any of these pr pieces of property, uh, these streets, would in any way down the road have a ripple effect to potentially opening up that road, I'm really concerned about that. It would change the character completely of our it's neighborhood. The it's the opposite. Pardon? If we vacate. Well, if vacating, could, couldn't that potentially perhaps alter the way properties are put together, which potentially could alter the ability to build on it and therefore um, promote some kind of access need? Mm -hmm. No? It, vacating does convey additional land to budding property owners, but it would be people that already own land there and all of those lots that abut. Katahdin Road, except for the one we mentioned for Mr. Panansky, yeah, are already built on. Okay, let me go back to my concern. Is that potential for that road to be opened? If ever? it's vacated, the road would never be able to be built. Okay, not no access there at all. Um, and the second point is, it is an extremely wet area, and any time we have water, it does come already down that road, and even altering the habitat at all to put in some type of trail, I think there may be potential for there to cause more water problems in our neighborhood. And therefore, if some decision was made to go in that direction, if there could be careful engineering study of the potential impact of that, because it is significant, the problems that we have already. Thanks. Let, let me just explain that the whole issue of the um, green belt, so to speak, that what we're looking at now is just to provide, if the street is vacated, to condition it with some type of right of way to allow passage. The whole issue of building a trail isn't before us now. I believe that would have to come to us. Um, maybe not. Conservation Commission, I, I don't guess. I think there's a wetland there. So no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't come before it wouldn't come you, but it would, go through, it would go through the town council. 
um, usually when the when the conservation commission wants to propose something on town property they put the proposal together and they send it to the council and the council blesses right. it, or, or it if it's in an rp1 or whatever it does come to absolutely yeah. anyway the point is just allowing the green belt or access doesn't necessarily mean that something will be built that's a separate issue uh, from our review I just want to mention there's already uh, a summer water main at the top of Katahdin Road that the town uh, uh, manages uh, so and that main runs all the way down along the paper road, Katahdin Paper Road, and, and in back of the residences on High View. So there is already, there would already seem to me anyway, to, to be some kind of utility easement that the town would want to maintain if they vacated that road. Um, is that a drain or is that a water line? It's a water line. They, in fact, it gets plugged up a lot of the time. The uh, water district mm -hmm. is out there um, frequently trying to find out what's wrong, with, why it's so wet uh, in, in that area. There always seems to be something, a broken main or something along in there. Uh, with respect to whether or not that it's a wetland area, I don't know. It is very wet down at the bottom of, of this hill. So I, I would want to see whether or not there is a wetland issue. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. I'm David Lambert. I live in 14 Highview Road above the Coppermans and the Goldsteins, and I'd just like to second uh, what they said earlier about the concern of any road that would be open to traffic, I think really contributes to a dangerous traffic flow down a very steep street. Our house, if you're going from the top of a high view, whereas the cul-de-sac is really at the crook of the curve as it goes down. And even people trying to go slow end up going very fast. Many winters there's accidents, people sliding down that road, and I think any road that would add to that traffic would be a danger to children there. Thank you. Thank you. It, well, hold on, Mr. Pansy. Is there any, anyone else that wants to address this issue? Okay. I, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, I'll close the public hearing and then have Mr. Thalen and Mr. Pinansky address some, as the applicant, so to speak, address some of the issues um, if, if everyone's already spoken. Um, Mr. Thalen, first for you, uh, I guess what I'm what I'm struggling with a little bit, and, and I apologize, it's a bit hard to follow all the ins and outs of this. But it, the question that's begging to be asked is is whether it seems to me that I heard a lot of the concerns from the abutters, but I also heard what Mr. Panatsky has agreed to provide in terms of conditions, and the two seem to address each other, but I'm not sure of that, <laughs> whether the accommodations you've made address all the concerns that have been raised, and um, I, 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 maybe you can help me. I'll try. Uh, okay. I, I was trying to take notes and listening to what people were saying, um, and, it, and I was having... There were, so I wasn't the only one then. People were in favor of Katahdin Road being vacated, which isn't before or part of our petition. Um, but the one, the concerns with respect to o Overlook, as I understand them, are the ma maintenance of the, the loop so that these people, including Mrs. Kelly, who I believe spoke this evening, and... Um, and I know I've spoken with Stephanie Boggs, and she uh, said to me on the phone of a concern that she, if somebody is parked in the lane here, she's blocked from going out here. So she likes the idea, even though she doesn't have an, a, 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 an easement as such, or a, a 
separately grant an easement over Mr. Bonanski's property, she goes over to, to, to get off, off Overlook Lane. We are sensitive to those access issues, and we are therefore willing to grant access over the existing roadway that is on Mr. Bonanski's land to enable those people to get out there and to maintain the loop. I think that's that's issue number one that, I, that I'm aware of. Um, the second issue is a concern that a adjoining owner, uh, uh, Sheila Mayberry, expresses about um, if Overlook Lane through the entirety of the um, yellow area, I'll put here, is granted that the building envelope increases. It, it comes closer to her by seven and a half feet, ultimately. And we are agreeable to a condition uh, by which the building envelope would not increase. Okay. Uh, one thing that um, I spoke with Maureen about and perhaps warrants some uh, emphasis or mention again, because it might have gotten lost, is our request for vacation, we are we are content with uh, and, and agreeable with a vacation that, if, I don't know if you can see that or not, but doesn't come quite all the way over here. In other words, it allows for the existing roadway um, to not be the subject of the vacation. Is that right, Maureen? Is that correct? Yeah, and I guess I would say that it, anything that looks anything like a roadway there, driveway, pathway, isn't eligible for a vacation because it exists in some form. Okay. So anything that, that's actually there isn't a paper street anymore. Okay. Um, mindful, however, that his driveway is, or his parking area is on there, off of that. And my information is that then it exists in some fashion. It, it, part of your information is what? Is that it's not a paper street. If, there's, if, if I take someone out there and they see any kind of a road or a driveway or anything, it's not a paper street anymore. It, it's a physical traveled area. The, the, tra the traveled, not... not uh, Even his driveway. I mean, well, 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 I'm not, I, I mean, when I say driveway, I mean the parking area off of the traveled way. I, I understand what you're I, I completely understand what you're saying. Oh. I'm telling you that my little paper street manual says it's not a paper street anymore. But, you know, as this moves through the process, if, if you and our town attorney can get together and find a way to make that work, that's fine with me. But my information is that if, if there's anything there, it's not a paper street anymore. Well, I, I would like to... If there's anything there... <laughs> All right, well, moving on to the next issue. In any event, we're, um, and I think that's the... the... Then there was the issue about um, you, your willingness to put a restriction if the property was ever sold about providing access. Oh, about, uh, yes. Yeah, we're, we're agreeable that, that put a restriction on that if, uh, that we would never seek access over uh, Katahdin Road. For the paper street. What? Maybe I should just quickly about Katasa. I just wanted to say something about Katasa. Go ahead, Mr. Panassi. Yeah, I can talk to Sai Hugo. Mr. Panassi, you have to from the lectern so they can. Yeah, everything I heard expressed about Katahdin Road, I, I agree with too. So whatever people collectively think makes sense, whether it's vacating or a easement for the town, I don't have any problem with that. So um, I wasn't really thinking about Katahdin at all, but I understand as someone who lived 20 years on High View Road, the concerns there. So I'm comfortable with whatever the collective view of the High View people are about Katahdin, the Katahdin Paper Street. Okay. Okay. 
concern about access over yeah, the top I, road. I think I got also that. actually be resolved by that being vacated. So and, and then the and then the issue of the right of way for the walkway is not that isn't something he would provide. No. We, we could just no. we'd have to work that out. We'd have to. And just to go back to your original question, I think that if that section of his driveway was a point of contention, I, my guess is it would have to be a different different process, perhaps a formal abandonment <coughs> by the council rather than a paper street vacation. So there's still opportunities for any public rights in the section of Overlook Lane that's functioning as his driveway to be be eliminated in some fashion. I just don't think the Paper Street way is the way to go with that. Well, um, so I'm not saying it can't be done. We need more work on the Overlook proposal. I mean, we have three in front of us, and I'm thinking we could address them one at a time. And my my first motion would be to table the discussion on Overlook f to the next workshop meeting. Um, but then we can address the other two streets one at a time. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I know Maureen. <laughs> I'm, I'm, Mr. Chairman, I believe someone else wants to be recognized. Uh, yeah, Mr. Pansy, this is, okay, go ahead. Yeah, come up. But this has to be the last. Peter, there. I don't know how many of you know, I actually work overseas, and thanks to the wonderful O'Hare Airport, it took me 44 hours to get here. <laughs> I arrived this morning. Um, I do come back to Maine a lot. I'll be back in September. But I do hope that whatever questions you have, whatever concerns you have, you please let me address them this evening, and, I, and I'll be as flexible as possible. Of course, I'm available by the phone and things like that. Let me, let me ask you a couple questions. We have all the neighbors here. It seems, you know, I, I wouldn't want to inconvenience them either to have to come out again. But yeah, ask me anything. It, 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 there, is there a time pressure to this other than the town council? No, there, no, there's no time pressure other than it's not easy for me to come to one of these meetings. Um, but it seems to me the issues have been pretty thoroughly discussed. All of the neighbors almost are here. Oh, Penny's here, Marge. No, but here, I, I, think, I think the concern that I have, quite yeah. frankly, is, is overlook, it seems to me, is a unique situation. I mean, Maureen just raised some more concerns. There may be an opportunity to iron some of the issues out between your attorney and the town attorney, but I just don't feel in a position that I'm ready to make a recommendation on that particular street. Maybe, the, again, the other two uh, we can, but Maureen has suggested that the town manager is looking for one response from us on all three streets rather than taking them one at a time. I mean, just so I understand the procedure, your role is to make a recommendation. In any event, it goes to the town council true. for the final true. decision. Okay, just so I understand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I tend to agree with, with, with you, Peter. I, I think we've gathered a lot of good information tonight to try to put a motion together with the number of conditions that would address accurately all of these separate issues and concerns and actually get it right so that they're all addressed. I think the chances of that are, are slim. What, what would be best is if at another workshop, if consensus can be reached on all of these issues and agreements can be reached with the town attorney and Mr. Thalen. And I, and I don't think there are huge issues distancing the parties. It's just there's so many of them and they're so confusing that we, we want to make sure we get this right if, if we do it. So at the risk of you know, putting this off, which it would, I think putting it off and getting it right is better than trying to pass, recommend something tonight that will be not accurate or representative, and um, I, I don't think it would be a bad idea to, to go through another workshop, but David. I, I know you two guys are attorneys, <laughs> and some of these things concern you, but I kind of feel as though that the town manager's looked at this pretty carefully. Um, he has his agenda, and I think the town council's asking us to gather some of this information and, and let some of the legal process be taken by the town attorney and the attorneys for the property owners. And I don't know why 
we have to, as a board, look at those issues. I think we can turn this over to the town council and let them handle it. I, I don't know why, I th I th but maybe you can clear No, the, the answer on Overlook for me is part of that is good planning. I mean, how do you lay out the rights that are in there? Clearly, they're legal issues, David, but they're also, you know, what makes sense from a planning perspective? I mean, the town council is going to consider even, you know, broader issues, green belt issues, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I think what's being proposed here is a legal issue, but it's also a planning issue, and that's why I think John and I are, are kind of keen on getting a little more information. I mean, the, the Kelly's concern is the one that really pushed me back from being in a position to uh, maybe look at a recommendation tonight. I just I have some real questions, and this is a severe step, and and I think they can be addressed. I think John's right, but uh, I'm I'm just not prepared to do that right now. Well, you know, a good point here too is that I I've walked the site myself just to see what we're talking about up there, and maybe it's a good idea if you did walk the site oh, because sure. I think it does raise those questions. As soon as you see it, it'll raise those questions. But I think that the town engineer and the, and the and the public works people can solve it. But I think if you see the site, uh, maybe it would help. So. All right. Um, yeah, Mr. Thalen, go ahead. Just to, just to, to kind of help my client a little bit through this process, because we have been to a workshop, and we're here again, and so forth. And, and that's fine. And I understand your, your concerns about wanting to do it right. I like I want to do it right also. And I'm wondering if. Um, I do have a disagreement about the driveway thing as a, as a legal matter, and that seems to have somehow caused concern here about going forward with the vacation. So uh, I would like the opportunity to discuss it with Mike Hill or whoever it may be, I don't know, um, and so that we can have something cogent and, and that makes sense the next time around rather than some little bit. And if I may, can I ask for clarification on exactly what the Kelly concern was that caused you the concern? Because I wasn't clear what it was. And, and that's maybe enough for me, is I'm not quite clear what it is, and, and maybe it can be addressed again. I, I, this, I guess, I guess, as I understand it, and maybe is it Mrs. Kelly can can address it. Is she's concerned, as I understand it, that if we abandon or, or vacate too much. She could have, she could be sort of landlocked from being able to loop out. Is that you are according to the information we were given, which was just the notice that came from the town, mm -hmm. because we did not receive the notice in time to attend the workshop. You would ask that the property be vacated, that the roadway be vacated up to this point, correct? Originally. Originally. We'll see. We have no information other than your original request. I see. And if a, an approximately an eight-foot strip of the private roadway were closed, we, sometime down the line, might not have access to the easement that we had already been granted. It would not affect your easement. You still would have. And maybe you can clarify. Bruce Letty said it might be a problem. But there and again, Mr. Panansky's request had been changed. So we have no cogent information about what Mr. Panansky's request is now. And my only concern at this point is, do you folks realize that this is about an eight-foot-wide pig path going up this <laughs> lot? <laughs> and you're going to allow the town to, there was mention of public works, that you were going to allow? I think they did. No. Uh, all right. But who's going to have the, the liability? Is the, now, now I'm speaking as a taxpayer. Am I going to have the liability? All right. I, let, I think, first of all, we have to decide, are we going to decide this here tonight, or do we want to put it to a workshop? Well, please, if, we if have it, absolutely, my husband and I have absolutely no problems with the request as it has been presented tonight. Okay. Leaving That's this portion mean. open, we have no problems with that. And just so I, for my clarification, John, again, okay. that's because you've moved the request down, down overlook, so to speak. This, Correct. okay, is that, is that right? Yes, the, at the critical juncture where the existing trail roadway makes the hook around and so forth. You're not looking to have that abandoned? No. 
Thank you. So the request has been moved back from the original request where our property lines meet. Okay. Does that? Yes, it does. Thank you. Well, the, here, here's the problem. We we can all talk about well, I changed the request, and but it, it's not formally before us. We don't have something that's going to reflect that tonight. I, I would suggest that we go back to a workshop. We can still formulate a recommendation, which we would do anyway today. So it's really not much of a delay, and. If there are any further comments or, or points anyone wants to make, please give something in writing to Maureen. We'll take it into account in the workshop. I would encourage Mr. Thalen to work with anyone that has, still has a concern based on what they heard, although I think you've addressed everybody's concerns. If there's a legal issue that you believe you have to take up with the town and the town planner, maybe we can have that straightened out. Can I, would I be allowed to do that? So, and I think the town council would appreciate the fact that if we gave a recommendation that was detailed and comprehensive, that would be less for them to have to <laughs> muddle through. Um, so th that's my suggestion at, at this point. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm, Go ahead. Hey, can I make one more comment, John? Because I'm trying to, and this is as much directed to the people, and I appreciate all the comments of the abutters. I'm having a hard, my bias is against vacation, just because it's, it's difficult to recreate it once the town gives up rights like they do. But I'm having some real a hard time rationalizing that with Katahdin Road, because I don't really understand why anyone would want to develop it out there. I mean, there is nothing to be gained by developing it. Um, uh, and I'm just, I'm, I'm asking the neighbors, is there a reason some developer would want to come in to, to, uh, to improve it? If there is, maybe they could get that information to Maureen, because I just don't see it. I mean, why would anyone want to do it? That's what I'm saying, and it just economically would make no sense. So, okay. If, John. All right. Well, um, at this point, I think <laughs> we've closed the public hearing. If you have further comments, bring them to Maureen. Uh, I, I do appreciate this is a complicated issue and we, we've we gained a lot from everyone's comments tonight. Now we have to kind of absorb them and, and put it into some sort of working order. I, I don't think that there's any great distance here. I think it's just a matter of trying to fit all this together and um, once, if we have the opportunity at workshop, um, Mr. Thalen has been very good about conveying your position uh, and I'm sure we can work it out and come up with a fairly comprehensive detailed recommendation that perhaps will save time when it gets to the town, town council. So, And you had a motion. I have a motion. <laughs> Theodore has been based on the mass of facts presented in the review of Paper Streets and Shore Acres North of Trendy Road and Table to Rail in June 1st, 2004. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. How about a motion to adjourn? All in favor. All in favor. Thank you. <laughs>